All right. So you can see, this is kind of good. Like you can see this muscle because this is one of the things that I want to put all together. There's a muscle that runs from the back, like right behind your ear down to somewhere right in there is where it joins up. See how you can see it when I turn? See it right there? And hopefully you can see it from that way. So anyway, it anchors in right here and it holds your, if you get it strong and utilize it, and this is something that you do, um, I'm learning in Vaganova ballet technique, it's really important holding this part of you up, building this up. And I'm realizing that we do the same thing in yoga practice a lot, in Ashtanga, you know, you're when you're doing, gazing at your hand, looking up, you're strengthening this muscle. And then there's another way that like we're strengthening it, turning it this way, and then in dance we stretch it, uh, tilting it like your ear towards your shoulder. So anyway, um, I was talking about that it, it, it joins in right here, and then I, I, I don't know how to, how to make all this make sense, but anyway, we were talking about that, and I'm thinking about that. Oh, and the thing was is that I looked this muscle up, Maybe the name will come to me in a minute. But it's unique to humans. That's what it said is like um, in movies and things, if they're trying to make a character look more human, they'll make sure that it has that muscle. Like they said that R2-D2 has something right there that looks like that muscle. Um, mastoid, I think. Sterno. Something, something to do with this and then your sternum. And then mastoid. I know mastoid is in, in it, so you'll find it if you look it up that way. But it made me think of this thing that um, one of the teachers that comes to our studio um, and does um, workshops, I remember this thing he was talking about, and I'm just going to read this. It's called the Antakarana, and it says the aim... So this is a quote from his teacher, um, who was Thomas Ashley Ferrand. Um, the aim of all spiritual teachings and practices is to build the Antakarana, a silver cord, rainbow bridge, or sutratma, sutrat, sutratma, the mechanism of evolution that goes by many names. And that's the quote. And then, this is also from the same man, um, Thomas Ashley Ferran. Um, it says that Antakarana is also called the silver cord, the pillar of light, the rainbow bridge, and other things in different approaches to esoteric spirituality is a triple strand of spiritual substance that we can build from our subtle body up the spiritual parts of ourselves that are not in the physical body or on the earth plane. Principal parts of it are anchored in the heart, throat, and head. And then this is highlighted. It says, true spiritual disciplines of many different types begin the process of building this spiritual evolutionary device. And then it talks about mantra, of course, helps the spiritual rope to grow upwards in a stable way at a fast rate. Um, and I, I, I have this feeling that the Ashtanga sequences, and especially as you get into, um, the more you go into them, like... Um, in advance A, you do some things where you're putting a lot of weight and pressure on your throat area, and, and like you start basically like every single one of those practices, all four of them, you're opening up your hips, you're getting all this energy out of your lower self, you're moving it through the connector, right, this middle part, up into your higher self, I swear, and... Each one of those practices, it basically does the same thing, but the stronger you get at pu pulling more energy up from the bottom, from the lower part of yourself, and then getting it up into the higher part of yourself, those further practices develop this thing more and more. And, and I really do like notice that all um, the Shalabhasana is where you're on your chest right there, um, Shayanasana. Um, I don't know, this isn't coming out right, but the thing is, is like even all the way to standing on your hands, which really, like if you look at the practices, that doesn't come until the fourth series, in the old way, the final series, and yeah, I know, you know, people put a handstand in all over the place, but you know, I guess maybe that's like after they know it, 
because part of the practice you, know, you have to build that fire of purification so if you need to have you know be going up into handstand to make that fire then fine but what i think is happening is it's symbolically what you're doing is saying okay you've pulled the energy up out of your lower self up into your higher self and you're you're symbolically saying by putting your feet upward and standing on your hands that um you want to carry out the actions of your spiritual self and less of the actions because your feet are up in the air and you can't go anywhere on them um, less of the actions of your lower self and more of the actions of your higher self and I think that um, it might might even be really important even how you like approach handstand that rather than it being where um, your arms are turned out like that so I was thinking about this a while ago the arms being turned out like that they have to be more inward that way because, let's see, I don't know, in case I fall over, because um, if they're not, you, you're, you got to bring, and if you look at Iyengar in, in handstand, he's one of the few people I think where you can really see this, you got to bring your heart up through that, you got to bring that thing that you're building, the spiritual connector thing, has to come up th through it and your lower self, which is down here, has to get directly over that. Um, yeah, I really do think that. And, and, it, and if your arms are out like this, I think it does a different thing than if you're, can you see that? So if my elbows are turned like that versus if my arms are that way. And then like, and, and that's why I think that forearm stands, all those forearm stands come before Handstanding is, is to train your arms to do that. Um, and like I say, like I can't, I can't do a handstand. Um, but that's what I'm gonna start like working on. Is trying to keep my arms up under. So that I think I really do think I think it's your lower self down there at your sacrum that has to be like Rit Padma and that lined up. And I think that that's a lot harder to do than just um, standing on your hands.